country that Zambians ever have been required to be reminded of their, uh, their uh, you know, the, 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 the religious requirement to observe certain observances uh, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give an example. I am Catholic, and the way that our worshipping patterns are organized in the Catholic Church, I can tell you that literally on every day of the week, we are in church at a given time of the day. We are worshipping our God. And we, and, 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 and we love to do that. And most Zambians continue to love to do that. And for us, we think that it is a bit bizarre that the fundamental religious beliefs of a group of people, such as the people that we are, can be reduced into a single day, such as this one. For us, we believe that Zambians continue to pray, and they continue to, play, uh, to, to, to pray in a manner that is reverent um, uh, every day of the week, every day of the month, um, you know, for the entirety of the year. And we continue to pray in a very special way. And even today, um, 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 members of the opposition and members of the ruling party, we have, we have participated in our different ways. I have prayed today. Mumita has prayed. Um, I know that President Haka and HMA had a prayer session. Um, we have to be able to respect the manner in which different people uh, desire to worship and connect with their creator. We cannot continue to demonize one another because one group of people or another or an individual decide that they want to continue to observe and continue to connect with their creator in a manner that uh, you know, they, 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 are, they feel speaks to, 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 to the way that they believe. Uh, for us, we think that a day such as this one is nothing extraordinary. It is nothing, um, uh, it is nothing uh, unique or special in the hearts and minds of many Zambians because this is something that we do on an everyday basis. And for us, from the perspective of the opposition, we continue uh, to urge Zambians to guard against the politicization yeah. of what, of, you know, politicize, uh, politicization mm. of who really we are yeah. as a people from a religious There's perspective. There's nothing extraordinary about this day. That's what you, those are the exact words you use, Mr. Wally. Uh, I seem to a bit disagree with you on that particular note because uh, I meant to believe this is a very ordinary extraordinary day that has been said to unite all of us as Zambians in prayer. And then they make it a reaction, really. Don't you think, yes, we do pray every day, like, like he stated. I think uh, nobody, you know, forced us to, 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 to come and pray on the 18th of October. But don't you think, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nava, that this is a very special day, you know, for the entirety of this country. Different political parties to come together, uh, reconcile on issues that you don't agree. Don't you think this should have been said as a special day, even as it is now? Don't you think this uh, should be a very special day that all of us should come together, despite our political affiliations, come together and pray, come together and connect in spirit? So, uh, like my brother Anthony said, the UPND believes in the preamble of Zambia as a Christian nation. Mm. Let's get that straight. The UPND has nothing against Zambia being a Christian nation. But the UPND has everything against making Christianity a political um, manifesto to try and win people towards an agenda of a particular political party, regardless of the name of that political party. When you look at this day, when it started, when it first started, mm -hmm. it was never even an, uh, a holiday in the beginning. It was just a day that was declared a day of prayer and reconciliation. The intention was noble. Mm. The realization or the reality has not been noble. I'll give you an example. The Bible teaches that when you're going to give an offering in church, before you lay your offering at the table, mm. go back and reconcile with your brother before you get into church and deal with your issues, then you can go and take your offering at the altar. What happens in Zambia is they call this day of national reconciliation, <clears throat> but they have never reconciled with anybody. They have no interest, no desire, nothing. They enjoy looking Christian, but they do not perform the deeds of Christianity. I'll give you two examples. If indeed Zambia was a Christian nation, in reality, not... Mm -hmm. On paper, and if indeed today was a day of 
reconciliation and love and kindness. How come President Hakainda Ichilema, who went today to the prison to visit his brother, Honorable Shimba Kamwili, in prison, he was denied access to the prison. Now, this is a day of reconciliation. How ironic. This is like a groom who sleeps out on his wedding night. It's absolutely ironic, absolutely absurd, absolute violation of the constitutional rights of Dr. Chishimba Kambwili and the constitutional right of President Akainde Ichilema or any citizens of, for that matter. The excuse was he needed clearance from the Minister of Home Affairs. There is no law that requires you to seek clearance. So if indeed those who were gathered, wherever they were gathered, pretentiously pretending to be humble, which that, that ship sailed a long, a long time ago. Because when you are humble, you love people. When you are humble, you accommodate even those with differences from yourself. The last example I want to give you. If this indeed was a Christian nation, mm. how come President Haka in the HLM and the UPND are not allowed even to move? I was in the entourage of President Haka in the, when we went to Kasama mm -hmm. uh, last week with Anthony. We saw with our own eyes, these are not stories, every city we got into, we were blocked. There was cadres with guns, with weapons. Mm -hmm. There is a video right now of a cadre from Serenje. We have his name. He's a Patriotic Front Chairperson of Serenje. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we can get to the details of yes. that particular conversation. I'm interested in the first you know, issue that you mentioned. Yes. They're supposed to reconcile first before we can go, yes. we can go to the mm -hmm. type of prayer. Uh, when you speak about reconciliation, what are some of the issues you feel uh, the UPND ought to, to reconcile with government? You mean from UPND to government or from government to UPND? Either way. All right. The UPND would like to reconcile freedoms to begin with. Freedoms of expression, freedom of assembly. The UPND has a right to assemble. The UPND right now has no right to hold a political rally right now. The reasons are covid Every reason they give the UPND for not gathering, in their very next breath, they violate this, those same reasons. So, freedoms. Number two, lawlessness. A UPND person will be summoned when he's the one who has been beaten. The person who has beaten the UPND person is never summoned. That's lawlessness. You cannot have laws for, for the Patriotic Front and President Lungu and his people, and then laws for everybody else. Zambia was not built on different laws. That reconciliation of laws, civic laws, uh, criminal laws, mm -hmm. and lastly, if you look at, for example, the man who aggravatedly robbed central police, we know his name, and the laws he was subjected to, this is the laws of someone who just went to ask, what are you doing in this thatched house at 18 hours, giving NRCs to foreigners? One was given aggravated robbery and spent one month in jail. The other one went on honeymoon, walked away and was celebrated whilst entering. The same country, different crimes. Mm. The one without a crime got aggravated role, uh, uh, charges. The one who actually shot at the police, beat the police, beat the police, is free. And you tell me you're a Christian? You tell me you're reconciling? You tell me you are a lawyer? Mm. But, but precisely, Mr. Walia, mm -hmm. don't you think that is the most, the more reason why you should, you know, force yourselves to, to be on the table of prayer, you know, with those that you feel have uh, gotten your rights? Um, it's it mentioned me, a lot of things. And, and, let, me, mm. and let me just hasten to, to mention, and he makes very, very good points. Look, the kind of reconciliation that needs to take place right now is not even between the party in power and the government vis-a-vis -vis the UPND or the opposition. It's the people themselves. Because the rights upon which the party in power are trampling on, they don't belong to the UPND. They belong to the Zambian people. Those people they are oppressing and without justice throwing behind bars are not just members of the UPND. They are Zambian citizens to start with. So when we're talking about reconciliation, I think it is important that we put it in its broader context. This is reconciliation with the Zambian spirit, with the Zambian people. The same Ubuntu spirit 
upon which this country is anchored, which now is being savaged and is being injured for purposes of political expediency for the benefit of the party in power. Prayer has nothing to do with what you say you are or who you say you are. It has everything to do with how you conduct yourself. At the moment, like Mubita has said, we have a group of people who would love to profess themselves as being Christian and they are quick to chastise others who dare to challenge their way and manner of conducting public business. But prayer we all know, it has to do with how people conduct themselves, especially if you have been given the responsibility of being in charge of God's people. You have to conduct yourself above board. At the moment, we know we are dealing with rogues, a group of people who only care for and about themselves. They don't care about whether or not Andrew is able to enjoy his fundamental human rights and freedoms. They don't. If, that flies, if your enjoyment of fundamental human rights and freedoms flies in their way of holding on to power, they will take that away from you. And the next day, they would want to go to church and say, we're humble, we God-worshipping people. The UPND does not subscribe to that. And this is why we continue to emphasize mm -hmm. that the kind of reconciliation that needs to take place is the kind of reconciliation that reconciles a government with its people. I love that. A government must begin to respect the very fabric of the Constitution which they were elected and they sought to protect and defend. Let, let me just add to that because there's a very good point there, Andrew. The reconciliation that Anton is talking about is for the people so that the Zambian people can be free. A Zambian person who supports Party B can wear party regalia and walk around because it's a freedom of expression. Yeah. A Zambian person in the market, right now, marketeers are not free to talk they're not free to express themselves because the following day they'll be hounded out of the markets they'll be charged ten thousand kwacha right now andrew right now not yesterday not 10 years ago not before colonial times right now in 2020 there are detention centers in all these marketers called to me where once they just feel you are indifferent they'll go and torture you the whole day the whole day, they, they literally tie you and put you on a swing. It's torture. And this torture is not happening by um, a rebel movement somewhere in the bush. It's happening by people mm -hmm. who subscribe to the same people who push the agenda of reconciliation. And let me finish on that reconciliation with this. The Minister of Religious Affairs, who is in charge of, apparently, this day of national prayer, was, goes on campaigns wears regalia, and campaigns on a tribal line. Yeah. This is supposed to be a reverend, you know, and that's, that's why I think Zambia needs to reconcile with itself. What do we really want? Yeah. Do we want people who confess to be Christians, but they are, they are racists, they are, they, are, they are dividing the nation? The Zambian people want freedom. The marketeer wants to be free, to celebrate her president if he's passing, mm -hmm. or, or his president. Do we see a maintenance on this particular day? Let me answer that. Mm. President Haka Inde Ichilema is a disciplinarian, a visionary, who will ensure before he spends three million kwacha on a national day of prayer, before he spends three million kwacha on a national day of prayer, President Haka Inde Ichilema will ask the question, do we have Panadol in hospitals? Are the doctors paid? Are the students on bursary um, been taken care of? Are the university lecturers who've been languishing in houses for 20 years, their husbands have been died, uh, have they been paid their retirement? Have the police who are sitting in police camps 20 years after their husbands died, they're not even allowed to date because should you date, you'll be kicked out of your house. President Sakainde will say, have these people been paid? If they have not been paid, <clears throat> I can assure Zambians, President Hakainde will not waste money that is taxpayers' money on things that, like Anthony said, are personal relationship items that you can still pray for a nation without spending three million uh, kwacha on a, on a national day of prayer. Why should church pastors receive a brown envelope for coming to national day of prayer? Why? Why should church pastors, when will they condemn injustice? If they themselves have their fingers and tentacles 
in the dish of the same person they're supposed to hold accountable. So I don't think for President Hakainda and UPND it's about will he allow this, will he not allow this. <coughs> President Hakainda will uphold the constitution and the law. That I'll tell you, he will never allow a single cadre to break your car and walk free. He will never allow a single cadre, whether his name is JJ, MJ, NJ, whatever, to go into a police station and beat up police officers. President Ichilema will empower police officers once again. When I was a kid, when we saw a police officer, we saluted in reverence. Today you see a police officer, they were beaten in our presence. People had guns in the presence of officers. They were throwing stones. Our police officers have been reduced to trash. Why? Because that's how this government wants things to be. They are interested in cadres having more authority than officers. President Hichilema won't allow that. He will allow institutions of government, from legislature to executive to parliament, to operate according to the creed and ethos of our national founding fathers. That is more important than a day where people go to get brown, brown envelopes. Uh, that's just actually, actually an, an entertainment day. To be honest, it's, it, nothing really goes on there. They just so, so sing. Basically, my, 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 the, question, the answer to my question is no. Um, um, Andrew, and I think we need to we need to answer this in its truest of contexts. Mm. The truest act of worship for any group of people that purport and claim to fear, respect, and revere God is to be able to take care of God's people. Mm -hmm. It is nothing to do with which platform you stand on and how long you can pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. When we, we were in, uh, in Kasama, yeah. we visited a mother's shelter mm -hmm. at Kasama General Hospital. This mother's shelter is called uh, Kugulanda, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The mothers who've been referred to Kasama General Hospital, and they are spending nights in the cold of night at that shelter. They have no beds or mattresses to sleep on. They never get given food at all. Okay? There are bathrooms, there are toilets, they are in a state of disuse. Okay? So, how then do we look at ourselves and say we are proud sons and daughters of the living God? We spend three million kwacha mm. on observing the so called day of prayer and national reconciliation when our mothers at Kasama General Hospital are that shelter, they're not being fed. They have no place to sleep. They are, you know, cleaning themselves up in filthy bathrooms. Do you think God would accept a prayer such as the ones that we're offering today? How do you explain that children are dying in mm -hmm. hospitals because there are no medicines there? Yeah, so the kind, of prayer, prayer, the kind of prayer, the kind of prayer, Mr. Mwanza. It has got everything to do with the cost at which we are commemorating this particular event. Mr. Mwanza, the truest act of worship for any God-loving, God-fearing people is to be able to do everything they can and they must to take care of God's people. We are not doing that. How can we say that we are worshipping God in truth and spirit? We are plundering this country dry. We are plundering this country dry. Do you think God, wherever he is sitting right now, he is pleased with the damage that we have done today? The kind of oppression that the Zambian people are going through, the kind of injustice to which people are being subjected to. Do you think God will be pleased with the kind of prayers that we are offering today? He is not a God who takes pride in sacrifices. Just do the right thing. And that, my friend, will be the biggest act of worship that the God that we serve really wants. So, for us, the question doesn't even arise because we believe that if we do the right thing for this country and its people, we already would have worshipped God in a manner that puts a smile on his face. It has nothing to do with uh, 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 superfluous uh, proclamations, such as the ones that we're seeing now. This is all political and religious grandstanding. It has nothing to do That's with worshiping God. That's emotional for your party, because one of your alliance partners has been incarcerated. Let yes. me, let's, let's, let's start by what you make of the arrest of Dr. Chima Kambu. Look, um, for us, we always continue to 
we always continue to emphasize that Zambia needs to return to the rule of law. We need to continue to build credibility in and around our judicial system and the system of laws which we believe must and should be applied fairly and squarely for every citizen, whether it's Shimba Kamwili, whether it's Andrew Mwansa, whether it's Murita Nawa or Anton Wadi. We believe that every citizen of this country, in this country, is and should be equal before <coughs> the laws of this land. At the moment, we do not feel that we are adhering to that spirit of everyone being equal before the laws of this land. Look, it is on the record that the judicial officer who convicted Chimba Kamwili on that day was recommended by the Judicial Complaints Commission to be removed from the bench for soliciting bribes on the record. That judicial officer who convicted Dr. Chimba Kamwili on that day should never have been on that bench. So in a country where we say we're a Christian nation and we respect the rule of law and the laws of this land, how do we allow a single judicial officer who had been recommended to be removed from the bench to go steal and sit on the bench and preside over a case of an individual who already had complained that he never ever felt that he was ever going to get justice at the hands of such a judicial officer? How can we be proud of that? And this is why for us we continue to echo the sentiments of all progressives in this country who continue to say that the incarceration, let alone the conviction of Dr. Chimba Kamwili, has all been done in the name of political grandstanding and politics for the benefit of the party in power. That is the only underlying thing here. And this is why today, when every other citizen who currently is in custody of our correctional services has the freedom and the right of being visited by anyone. I, Dr. Chimbakamwili today could not be visited just, by one Hakka in the I want to understand where the politics you know, comes to play. You know, uh, how is the incarceration political? I can, I can answer that. How does it come to play? Maybe because the one that took him to court is, is a political opponent? I, I think we're not here to discuss unknown entities and people who do not really matter in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. uh, but if we look at the judgment that was read and I, I believe the judge will forever regret the preamble of that judgment in the preamble he mm -hmm. states how the case was started and who reported who to who and who said what I am still shocked to this day that the judge could write such and in and in um, um, implement certain people, uh, include certain names in that judgment. So I don't even want to go into the nitty gritty because this case has been uh, judged and it's going to go to appeals and so on and so forth. But I just want to highlight the very fact that the judge had the audacity to state who was behind this case, who complained, not who started it, how, who said what to who and who to what. That in itself is compromise. And if we were in America, where justice reigns for everybody and nobody is above the law in America, this case would never have taken, taken off, one. And this case, um, the jury would not have allowed, because Americans are very objective people. It's just here in Zambia where <coughs> the effects of the brown envelope changes a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And I think we should all have a self-introspection as to what we are willing to allow as a nation if we're going to let this envelope destroy all our systems. So my question again, Mr. Nawa, Mr. Nawa was where does the politics, you know, in, in this... In this Andrew, I, I know what you're trying to do, and I also know what I'm trying to do. I don't want to be drawn in people's fights. But I will tell you, Andrew, go and read that judgment. I've read that judgment. And at the very beginning of the page, it tells you the political influence in that judgment. And I think all of us who have ever studied this case, I didn't even know. We used to hear these rumors. They denied them. They, we said, Dr. Kamui had said that this case was political. The powers that be denied it. The judge, for some reason, disclosed 
<laughs> the politicians who were involved in this case. Yeah. It's on record. And I, as a journalist, I challenge you. Because we live in a country where if I mention a name, I'll be summoned tomorrow. Even if I'm telling the truth. Even if I'm telling the truth. And I'm telling you right now, go and pull us. I'm not scared to be summoned. I'm not scared. To be, I just don't want to mention certain names and give them free publicity. I'm not scared to be summoned. Some of us have reached this. But also, I think it's for the sake of thousands of people that are following this discussion now, they want to get the entire truth, especially from the side of the victim, and what they feel, and, you know, just their reaction. I think Anthony has, you know, has really spoken for the UPND. Yeah. Listen, listen, Andrew, what you are trying to get, I would like the NDC spokesperson to speak to that. Because if I'm drawn in other people's battles, I will be going outside my jurisprudence. I will not mention the names, but it is there in the judgment. Go and pull up the judgment, and every right-thinking Zambia knows with their heart and conscience. For us as a UPND, we are heartbroken. We are heartbroken, not because it's Dr. Shimba Kamwili. Mm -hmm. We were heartbroken when uh, Mugala was killed. We were heartbroken. We've been heartbroken over every violation of the law. We are heartbroken. This is just another addition to the violation of people's rights, mm -hmm. the violation of judicial order. Which was not followed. Yes, yes, by if, the way, if you were the one behind the bench, you know what would be your judgment? By the way, uh, Andrew, I think in, in, in response to that and in response to the question that you you asked me later, you are a journalist, and you follow every case in this country where politicians are involved. Mention one case in the most recent history where a serving member of government who has ever been summoned before law enforcement agencies has ever ever gone to court and gotten convicted. One. And then let's mention those who got no law prosecutors. Yes. And those whose cases were abandoned. It's a laundry list. And this is and this is how you know that these cases are political. Absolutely. You just have to look at how many of them have been taken through the so called due process of the law for purposes of being cleaned up and they get acquitted. They were never going to get convicted. The only chance in this country that you ever get of convicting a politician is after they get out of office and they fall out with their colleagues in the in, in, in party in power. Mm. And this is what you're witnessing now. There was no way that President Shimakamu of the NDC was ever going to get justice at the hands of the PM. Never. Not when he's in the news every time of day, looking them in the eye and telling them how corrupt they are. If Dr. Chimbakam Willi was in the opposition, singing the praises of President Edgar Lungu and the PF, that, was no, that case would have been chucked out a long time ago. A long, long time ago. How many of them have you seen? So when we say these cases are political, that is exactly what we mean. There is no single politician serving in government right now even when we know exactly how corrupt they are, I, 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 Andrew, who are point, ever going to get convicted for wrongdoing. When the judgment was read, I, I, I did have a conversation just on this very platform with a complainant that was uh, uh, EEP president, uh, Chilipe Chayari. I asked him a very question. He said it's non political. I think uh, the best of the judgment was the content and the quality of the evidence that he did provide before the court of law. And I asked you a very important question, Mr. Wally. If you are in the position of, uh, you know, Mr. Simsam, what would your judgment look like? Provided, you know, the evidence that uh, one complainant, uh, uh, you know, EP president provided. If it was non-political, ask the individual whose name you have just quoted to go and complain before law enforcement agencies that the wealth of the sitting Republican president today, between 2015 and 2016, skyrocketed by 848%. This is a fact when his earning capacity, legal earning capacity, is less than a million. Is less than a million. Per year. Per year. And yet, his personal wealth rose from 2.3 million to 20 million. To over 20, 22 million in less than a year. In eight months. If this is about justice, let that individual who came here go and complain. Because Zambians deserve an answer. Is there a single citizen in this country? whose wealth has ever increased 
by close to a thousand in one year. What kind of business are you doing to what earn kind of that? Business? Kind? Even drug dealers don't earn that kind of money. What kind of business? And then in your uh, and precisely so the point is that he came and said, look. The UPND and all these other political parties, opposite political parties, are very strong in terms of uh, issuing statements that border on corruption. But why don't you drag these issues to court? Okay. Why don't you, you know? Let's talk about dragging them to court. Okay. But before that, I want to quickly answer that question. Um, as Anthony said, 2015, the president declares his net worth 2.3 million kwacha. Eight months later, he's at 23 million kwacha. What business did he do in eight months to get 20 million? That's the commission of inquiry Zambia needs. As to how does a person we used to live with in Chawama, we were with him in Chawama. Stories are there in Chawama. Pictures are there of how he looked in Chawama, how he, what he did and didn't do, what he shouldn't have done in Chawama. How does he today have the kind of businesses that he have? And he has the audacity and pomposity to instigate a commission of inquiry against an evaluator, somebody who didn't even buy anything 30 years ago, 29 years ago. This is the injustice of this nation. Okay? Now, why don't we drag cases to court? We drag the case to court. Case number one, 2016. Our election, we had a petition over the election results. What happened? What happened to our 14 days? One. Two, ministers stayed in power in office. Case went to court. Constitutional court, the highest court in the land, ordered mm -hmm. that all the ministers that sat in government illegally, illegally pay the money back. The justice minister, the custodian of the law, said, I'm not going to pay that money back. The president says, no, to this day, these ministers have not paid back almost 30 million kwacha total together, all of them, in amounts. Mm. That's money that is, can put 30,000 children through bursary over the next 10 years. Mm. You tell me to drag them to court? There are judgments right now in court that are not being enforced. Fake report. Fake report is there. The money that has been stolen. Auditor General's report is there. There were complaints against the Minister of Health over COVID. He was dragged to court. What happened to him? There was an issue with Honorable Chitotela. He was dragged to court. What happened to him? I can tell you, Andrew, like Anthony rightly said, what Zambia needs is change. <laughs> That's it. Zambia needs change of governance. Zambia needs a group of people that respect the Constitution. A group of people that will not change the Constitution. Look at this Const Bill 10. Talk about taking them to court. Mm -hmm. Bill 10 expired. Bill 10, there is a law in Parliament where you can only discuss a bill in a six-month period. Mm -hmm. When that six month elapses, you cannot bring the same bill. It's dead. What, what does this then tell us about our judicial system? Mr. Wall? Andrew, there's a lot of work that we need to do. Right now, when you ask every right-thinking Zambian, they are slowly beginning to lose confidence in their ability for our judiciary to discharge its duties and responsibilities in a manner that is fair and in a manner that is credible. Specifically because of issues such as the one that we've just been talking about to do with President Chimbakam Winnie of the NDC. When you have a judicial officer who has a recommendation on his head to be moved or removed from the bench, we expect that to be done because it's the right thing to do. So now, an ordinary member of the public like myself, I think I deserve to know why we should believe that the judiciary is in a state that should be respected and is credible enough when we have an officer who should never have been on the bench, sitting on the bench and reading out a judgment on account of another citizen who had complained that they did not believe that they were ever going to get justice at the hands of such an individual. Why should people have confidence? And these are the kind of discussions that, for us in the UPND, we believe. If we want to restore and bring back credibility, not just to the judiciary, but the public service in general, we need to change the tone of political leadership in this country. And this is why we continue to say there needs to be a change of political leadership in Zambia. And that change 
can and should only happen at the ballot next year. Look, Zambians today are, are wondering why they can't feed their families. Ubungana would do that. Over 100 kwacha. They don't know what is happening. All that they know is that in Gabam Kushta, Ubunga, every day Ubungo Mtengo will change. And it's not just the price of many meal. But there are underlying factors that are driving this poverty and the hopelessness and the helplessness that we're seeing at household level. Because political leadership is broken, because political leadership is allowing rampant corruption at the hands of elected public officials. Instead of having a government take 20, 25, 30 million dollars to go and pump into an industry such as NCZ, so that we can produce cheaper fertilizers, which will be costing maximum 150 kwacha. They're electing to go and spend $500 million of money we don't have, paying their friends in the private sector. 300% markup on the price of fertilizer. Who can afford in this country a bag of fertilizer at 500 kwacha? Who can afford that? And what do you think is going to happen when you are selling a bag of fertilizer at 500 kwacha? What do you think is going to happen to a bag of medicine? But potentially, I think undoubtedly you, you agree with me that Dr. Chimba Kambili, you know, was one of the heavyweights, you know, in the alliance, and I think one that what well, many, uh, you know, were saying that probably is the one that will be running it, in, you know, ahead of the elections in 2021 for the UPND. How much of a setback is this to you, especially as a UPND? What impact, you know, has this created, especially ahead of the elections next year? I think um, <clears throat> our opponents, those who have violated the rights of Zambians and the freedoms of Zambians, those who have molested the economic well-being of Zambians and have enriched themselves and seek the luxuries of stolen wealth, they think by locking up one person, they've locked up 18 million people. The wind of change that has swept Zambia today, like all the major winds of change that have come upon our land, have to do with individual citizens who are collectively feeling the pinch of poor governance, bad decisions, poor leadership, corruption and greed, misappropriation of public funds, and the lack of pursuit of justice for all. So the conscious awakening of Zambians has already happened. You can look up Anthony today. It doesn't change the fact that a teacher who graduated from school has not been posted because now we want her uh, to give you 15,000 kwacha to be posted. You can look up anybody, regardless of who they are. It doesn't change the fact that our economy, people cannot survive, there's no medicine at our hospitals, and thieves are walking around in innocence, whilst people who are victimized and vandalized and violated are the ones being summoned from one police station to another. So, as much as we are touched by the... Uh, the speed hump that has been set upon us, it's nothing but a speed hump. As much as they have taken away the voting rights of 6.6 .6 million people in one night, me, I won't be surprised one day if we wake up and say, oh, your passports are not valid. We have a new passport company that we've brought in that will now bring mm -hmm. this kind of passport. It's mm -hmm. been done before, remember, through RATSA. They, had, they almost brought a new system where they wanted to re-register already registered vehicles. Mm -hmm. The reason is these people sit amongst themselves and they say, They don't think about how will we develop, how will we end load shedding by selling a useless private jet, which is worth $335 million collectively plus maintenance, and putting that money into solar panels that can generate alternative energy for our people. They don't think like that. They think, how do we punish these stupid Zambians, these non-thinking Zambians, so that we can become rich? But you see, even a broken vase holds roses. Even a caged bird still sings. Mm -hmm. The caging of Dr. Kambiri is a caging of us all. The violation of the rights of citizens where they can't even protest. Mm -hmm. They can't, Zambians can't protest. Only those who have been paid can go to state house straight to protest. That violation is a brutal assault on the souls of Zambians. Zambians are happy people, Andrew. Very happy, welcoming people. But you go anywhere today from Kalikiliki to mm -hmm. Chelston 
tuchazanga tuchawama tuchiwe mpala go anywhere to, to Mongoli Mulunga Livingstone Erin Bretel there is not a single happy Zambian not the only people who are happy in Zambia are the ones at the helm of injustice and what we need as a nation is to awaken all of us and say even if they change the voters register even if the next voters register will only have 10 people and right now by all likelihood the 2021 voters register will be about 1.5 million people based on this new voter register mm -hmm. 1.5 they won't even reach 9 million they can't it's impossible in 2015 uh, when there was a new voter in 2016 in three months they only got 1.5 million so in all likelihood by our projections the new voter register will be about 1.3 1.5 million people these 1.3 1.5 million people will be the redeemers saviors of zambia they will vote their conscience they will vote the, the right thing when they go into that ballot god will help them remember the tears of every mother whose child was brutally murdered through gassing god will help them remember the tears of frank Bugala and everybody that is the conscience so as chishimba is in jail and many others who may go in jail as a result of this agenda which has been unfolding you can't jail a heart you can't jail a conscience you can't jail a spirit and we in the UPND will work hard to mobilize even though we're not allowed to mobilize they can mobilize they can bring mafiki zor they've spent they've already spent over 1 million kwacha on a concert that hasn't occurred they've already spent where did they get that money from we should be asking these questions, Zambians, and not only ask Haka in each name. Mm. Oh, by the way, Andrew, you may not know this story. I've never told you. When I was a young banker, 20 years old, 21 years old, I was a banker for President Haka in each name. 21 years old. I know that man personally and his history and his hard work. Before he went on that privatization thing, that man was wealthy. I was his personal bank. He was wealthy before he went on privatization. He was wealthy. How he made money on that privatization is his personal money. There are lawyers who are on that privatization. We don't know where they took their money. And you want to set up a commission of inquiry to judge a wealthy man? Why can't we celebrate a rich man in our own country? Mm. A rich, humble man who has genuinely earned his wealth. Mm. That man has always worked hard. Let, let's switch the conversation and uh, you know look at political violence. I do know for a fact that your entourage was being stoned. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're part of the entourage. Yep. Uh, you know, Mr. William, yep. Mr. Nawa, yep. Mr. Ranger. Just give us you know some details of what transpired. <laughs> um, and and you know, Andrew, and I think this is something that the Zambian people need to to think about really, really critically and seriously. You know, each time we hear that PF cadres are violent and they're armed, True. We, we think that these are stories that people just make up. Mubita and I had accompanied President Haka in H mm. to Northern Province in Kasama because we wanted to go and attend the, um, uh, the hearing of um, uh, Mr. Mcheneka, who had been uh, in, in incarceration for over a month. Uh, now, thank goodness, obviously, he and several others have been, have been released. And I can tell you this with my hand on my heart. I saw this with my own eyes, Andrew. PF cadres are armed. Yeah. And they're dangerous. And they're violent. <coughs> the station at Serenje, uh, the filling station, right across the road, there is a small patriotic front office. Even on our way to, to Northern Province, they were there. They wanted to cause commotion. But thankfully, they had not been expecting us. Yes. So they were not as better organized as they probably would have loved. But on our way back, it was a different story. <coughs> we saw two plainly armed political party cadres from the PF in the crowd. And police officers were there. Right next to them. They were there. We told them that individual and that gun. individual had a gun mm -hmm. because the guns were visible. The police officer were powerless to do anything about it. They can't touch a card. You have seen, as I want to believe all Zambians have done, you have seen the footage. When our convoy was leaving the feeding station, trying to exit, 
syringe on our way to the sun. You saw what happens. PF cutters visibly hurling stones mm -hmm. and bottles on our convoy, unprovoked. And the police were there. What kind of country is this? What do you think would have happened if all of us who were in that convoy had decided to retaliate? What do you think would have happened? And this is the kind of dangerous situation the PF are breeding in this country because one day the people they are attacking will retaliate and people will get hurt or people will die. We don't want Our that. vehicle was hit. It was broken. Yeah. President Hakai Nishima's vehicle there's a stone that yeah. literally <laughs> fell onto the, the, back, the back end yeah. wiper yeah. of the vehicle. He could have been hurt. What do you think would have happened if that had happened? We don't want a situation like that. And this is why we continue telling Mr. Kakuma Kanganja and Mr. Stephen Kampiongo, please do your jobs and do your jobs professionally because your job does not only exist to protect members of the Patriotic Front. Your job exists to protect all of us. We want to feel safe in our own country. It's not safe. We don't want to feel like it's our job to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. But what choice are we going to be left with if every time we go out mm -hmm. just trying to buy a bottle of water, but just because we're wearing a UPND branded t-shirt right now, but I don't think you can walk into Serenje with a UPND branded t-shirt. Andrew, let me tell They're you going to lynch you. Let me tell you what happened to us on our way back, before the refueling, we literally were chased from Mpika. We never ate until we reached Kapiri. That's true. And not even Kapiri town, outside Kapiri. We yeah. drove for almost eight, nine hours yeah. without a stop. Mm -hmm. Every town we went in, and you see, the police are aiding cadres. How did they, how did the cadres know where we were? They were police stations, police blocks. We were searched. Me and Anton were hungry at some point. Yeah. And um, Anton is like, no, you need to stop and we get something to eat. And we reached Mukushi. That was yeah. Mukushi. Yeah. Somehow, we and the main convoy had kind of separated for some reason. Uh, and we wanted to stop in Mukushi too. And we didn't find the convoy there. Yeah. And Anton is like, where did they go? I'm like, I don't know. We stopped by Mukushi filling station. This is real story. Yeah. And 12, 15 people are coming towards our vehicle. Yeah. Anthony says, we got to get out of here with pangas and stones to kill me and Anthony. Not even President Hakainde. Yeah. And that is, that's not the Zambia yeah. we want. And so Anthony is here asking uh, Wakanganja and Wakakoma to do their job. You're asking the wrong people to do their job. When you are a grown man, you don't need to be told to do a job. Especially if you are a constitutional officer. You know the law. What we need to do is ask Zambians to do their job. You know what to do. Mm. You did write on your Facebook, Mr. Walia, that you will fight back. Um, there was some rumor that you know, was circulating around social media that... Um, uh, your leader, HH, was summoned together with Romeo Kangombe, but you know, they didn't make clarifications, I think, this, uh, earlier this day, that uh, the rumors were not correct. Listen. But you, you, you've been stating time listen, and those, that those, fight back. Listen, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is something that the police and the PF should know. They cannot continue pushing people against the wall, much contrary to what the law provides and they keep on expecting that the Zambian people are going to be silent. You can beat me once, you can beat me twice, but a third time, chances are, if there's no one to protect me, I will probably have to protect myself. We don't want to have to do that, because we have men and women in uniform who get paid on account of taxpayers to keep all of us safe. We want to feel safe again in our own country. But at the moment, we don't begin to believe in that there is a chance of that because there is a systematic plot at the moment to suffocate fundamental rights and freedoms of ordinary individuals like you and I. And this is why we continue to emphasize if the police are not going to protect us, we will protect ourselves, Absolutely. otherwise we die. It's a constitutional right to defend yourself. In fact, biologically speaking, it's instinctive. 
it's instinctive if i raise my arm and i want to slap you in the face your eye will twitch your left arm will guard it it's instinctive god put it in all of us but we are living in a in a regime <laughs> where even to protect yourself you will be summoned even to speak you will be summoned unless you are idol worshiping we can't all some of us don't like brown envelopes we like to work hard it's, it's funny huh? because um, I think especially you politicians have been issuing the very statements that look if one of our leaders is arrested we'll fight uh, I remember in 2016 when uh, you know I remember also when, 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 when President HH was, was, was arrested you, you swore to fight for him but I think we didn't see nationwide protests to, 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 to ensure that you sleep at the prisons he was President um, CK was arrested you know some People from the corporate board did say that, look, we will not allow the police to, to, to touch CK, we will rise up. Well, we didn't see any, any of that happen. He also said in the same language that, look, if President HH has been touched, all of us will rise I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm forced to believe that you speak very well, but you're a bunch of cowards, you know, who uh, abandon your leaders when they are arrested. Mr. Boy, are you ready to protect HH when he's arrested? And let me make this very clear. This has never been about President Haka and HM. And this is not about President Chimakamwini of the NDC. This is about all of us. And I want to bet you, Andrew, these Zandan people you see and you think are indifferent and they don't care, wait until this kind of police brutality that we're witnessing towards members of the opposition, wait until it filters through to ordinary people. When they're going to find cutters standing in the middle of the road telling you and everybody else, you can't go to your office to go and work and make money. You can't go to the market and buy food. Wait until that happens. And these people that you think are peaceful Zambians, you see what's going to happen. This is not about Haka in HM or Chimbakamwe. This is about protecting the fabric of our laws. And the moment that Zambians genuinely begin to feeling that the fabric of our laws, the fabric upon which this country is built, is being eroded by a small group of people so that they can hold on to power. We are playing with trouble right here. And we need to be very, very careful. And this is why we continue to emphasize that law and order exists for all of us. Mm. Uh, Laws must exist question. for all of us, Andrew. Are, we, are, 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 are <clears throat> you ready as Zambian people? Are we ready as Zambian people to stand up and fight for what is right? The question is not, are Zambians ready to fight? The question is, is the government ready to start a war? That's the question. I think from your end, I think government has already started a war. But then, because of our peaceful nature, we are checkmating government and saying, this thing you are doing, of taking away the voting rights of people. You are pouring kerosene on a, on a brazier that you shouldn't be pouring kerosene. We are saying to the government, uh, you are going to the edge of the human soul. You see, the, the human being is a funny person. That's why scripture says the heart above all things is deceitful. So you can underestimate people but you cannot fool people all the time. You see, you can fool people. No wonder they say power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. And uh, when you look at social science and um, biometrics, there is what they call the tipping point. The point at which you reach a point of no return, where things spill over. If you look at Rwanda 26 years ago, everything was okay the day before. Very okay between the Hutsus and Tutsis. Everything was okay. If you look at uh, Angola, you look at apartheid, everything was okay. But there's always that moment, remember June 16th, 1976, there's always that thing that flips the switch mm -hmm. and takes an argument to the next level. And I think this argument is not about the peaceful nature of Zambians. This argument should be about our collective agenda to have a nation mm -hmm united according to the forefathers of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda and Wood of One Zambia, One Nation, to bring unity and peace, not to divide us according to tribe, not to divide us according to voting patterns. Yeah. Uh, look at even what happened in, uh, in national registration cards in, 
northern province, you know, where they, them they were able to register through phase one, uh, the voting, uh, the uh, NRCs. But when you look at the phase two of the NRCs, machines are broken, there are excuses, the number of people being registered is not equal to the other province. All these things are pushing people to the edge. And people are saying, we want a country of laws. We don't want war. We don't want violence. We want peace. We want justice. We want righteousness in the judiciary, in parliament, in the executive, and not bringing about things that are dividing us and destroying us for who we truly are. Mm -hmm. and, and Andrew, Mwita just mentions one important issue about voting. And we know that the right of every Zambian to vote is attached to an NRC, and provided that you are over the age of 18. 18. Mm -hmm. And the UPND has been complaining repeatedly <coughs> that the Patriotic Front have gone outside of their way, breaking every fabric of the law, issuing NRCs in a manner that is illegal and does not speak to the idea that every Zambian is only ever entitled to one NRC. And I want to show you, I want to show you something, um, Andrew. And maybe Anyone who's here in the studio, because we are all Zambians, I think you, I want to show you something, okay? Now, there's a lot of these things. You might want to see this, because you are also a Zambian, okay? I want you to see this. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can put them to the screen so that people could see. Okay? You can, you, you can come and have a look, because you are also a Zambian. What, what do you see here, Andrew? Well, I'm seeing uh, one person with two different nursing numbers. Okay. And the names on the back? And what do you see here again? Just before he goes up, and the names on the back? The names of the park are... You don't need to call the names out. Are they the same? Are they the same? No, no. Names are different. And what about this one here? The same nursing numbers different. Okay. The names so, are different. So there are thousands of these. This is just a small example of where you have one individual being issued with multiple NRCs under different names. So basically what the PF are saying is there are Zambians right now who are more Zambian than you and I, more Zambian than Muita now. Mm -hmm. This is a platform for the commission of crime because these individuals can actually obtain multiple passports. They can actually go onto the FISP register and get themselves multiple benefits. These people can obtain multiple benefits in terms of, for example, social cash transfer. These people can obtain multiple loans. So the PF are just thinking about one individual being able to vote multiple times. That's it. Okay? Because they are so myopic like that. But this is a platform for the commission of a crime. And these are the kind of people that we're dealing with. This is un-Zambian, Andrew. There is no Zambian in this country who is ever entitled to more than one NRC. No, it's never happened. This is not a fabrication. There's more of these things. And people are collecting eight NRCs, and they are, and they are registering as voters in different names. And the idea is... These eight will vote in different constituencies. That way are their weak points. That way the numbers of voters in those areas goes up. So we've been crying all along mm. that the NRC registration is not transparent, something is dodgy, something is fishy. And we have found this evidence. It's there on the ground. People, actually some of them registered. But how do you get a hold of this evidence? It doesn't matter, Andrew. Yeah. What you need to be concerned about is you have something which has terribly gone wrong. Mubita and I have no means of fabricating NRCs. I mean, that's just stupid. Even if we wanted to, we, we can't. The only people who can do this are people in government with the tools and the equipment to produce NRCs. So never mind how we got this. These things are out there, and they have been produced by officers of the party in power. When they arrested uh, Mucheleka and others, they said we were not doing anything illegal. We had some evidence of minors being given NRCs, 10-year-olds. The evidence they refused. 
They said you just fabricated that. Okay? But I am here to tell you. Mm. Could, it be, could, could this be the, some of the inaccuracies that maybe I'm telling us to Because I think the allegations were that, uh, <laughs> you, you know, he got the printers and everything. Could this be part of why got I, don't know, I don't know if you have met Mam uh, and uh, who he is. <laughs> and and, and uh, he's one of the sweetest people on earth, and he can never even steal a fly if he had a chance to do that. No. The truth here is, it's Zambians who are being stolen from hmm. their rights to vote in a free and fair election. And there is a scheme to manipulate the ultimate results. And one of the questions I ask myself is... Now, this is outrageous, really. But what are you doing about it? As, uh, what would you suggest? I'm called for... What would you what suggest? Would you suggest? Uh, it's not my show, it's your show. Uh, and how to get to... You know, no, but you are a Zambian. I am yes. a Zambian, but my job now is to find out from you. That is my job now, just to find out from you. And this is... And I think for me it brings me to the point where people always say, why is it that Zambians are docile? Okay? You have the state of our democracy being savaged. Absolutely. Right here. Okay? We have law and order being savaged right here. And by the way, and Andrew, sorry, Anthony, do you know that in the voter <coughs> registration process right now, the, the NRC centers are being manned by cadres right now? And our poor mothers who are being made to stand in line for four days have to pay 80 kwacha, 90 kwacha, 100 kwacha to get their NRC to bribe officials. This is not information that, you know, the state machinery is very intelligent. It's got so many ways to, to know what is going on. They are aware of this. But because our law has now tilted towards cutters, I've never in my whole life seen cadres manage NRCs. And that is exactly what is happening. So I'll tell you what really needs to happen, Andrew. If we have a government that is responsible and sober-minded, already you have an indication that there are individuals in this country who have multiple identities. The logical and sensible thing for the PF to do right now is to recall all the NRCs that were issued over the course of the mobile registration exercise, all of them. Because there is no guarantee right now, Andrew. Right now you have these ones. Can you begin to imagine how many others are out there? And can you imagine what else people might and will be able to do with multiple identities like this? They are issuing more than, in some cases, we found nine NRCs to one person. How do you do that? And right now country? there are even some some schemes anyway i don't even want to go there let's just leave it so these are the kind of people that you're dealing with so when we talk about these things we, we're not just making you say them we up. are cry babies okay so why that's, should that's it, not a so, baby stuff so why should it be just Mubita and i getting livid about these things because this is not just Mubita and i who are getting savage this is the zambian spirit the people who you are saying we are praying today are the people who are doing this. And they are aware of this. And they are aware of it. So maybe, so maybe Mr. Kampiongo needs to go on the record and tell the Zambian people how this is possible. How a person this is, can this have is the eight deliberate. NRCs with this is eight not names, a mistake, sir. eight different numbers. This is not a mistake. This, this was deliberate. It was done deliberately. Okay? It was done deliberately. So can the PF then explain to the Zambian people why they are issuing multiple NRCs to individuals under different identities? This is not an issue for President Haka and HNM, or Mubita or Anthony or the UPND. This is a Zambian issue, mm. sir. There is no Zambian who is entitled to more than just one NRC. We're all entitled just to one. And there's no Zambian who is allowed to vote more than once. No. What does this tell us about the credibility of uh, the 2021 general elections really now? Your guess is as good as mine, Andrew. If there are individuals who potentially have an opportunity to cast more than just one ballot, what do you think that means in terms of the credibility of an election? If there are 10-year-olds in Northern Province and Wapula Province who have already gotten their NRCs against the uh, Registration Act of 2016, 10-year-old 
has really got an energy. Fully clear, if, uh, you know, maybe for, for people that have not seen yet, this is one individual with two NRCs, two different names, and uh, two different in, in NRC numbers. Also, this is the in, same individual with two different names, two different NRC numbers, and uh, two different names as well. Yep. You know, for me, what I'm seeing now is that you're headed for another you know, uh, defeat you had it for two years in 2021. Because if, if people are going to vote two times, one individual is going to vote two so, times. So when, you say, what, what, so when you say we're headed for tears, who's going to cry? I mean, because this is not, this is not well, a UPND uh, election, Andrew. Yeah. This is an election for all of us. If you decide you want to vote for now, the next person wants to, to, to vote for me. Be, Except that the other well, person... is a call to action. Because to be honest with you, you're headed for, for tears in 2021 because you lose elections because of this irregularity. This is, this is a Zambian dream being stolen. Right here. What is the call to action now? Listen. I, I, I thought about this long and hard. And if Zambians have any reason right now to doubt the intentions of the PF, this is it. This is it. So when they're coming, giving you empowerment, this, empowerment, that, but let me fit Shafipamenzo. This is what they are doing now. They are trying to consolidate power using every means and tools available. Now, you want Nawa and Anthony to be the ones who go and say and cry foul in the face of a brutal regime stealing our democracy like this. This is not about me anymore. It's not even about now. Today, the PF might decide this guy is talking too much, we're going to kill him. But our democracy is still going to be in tatters. This is not about me, it's also about you. So you need to think about what this means in the context of you and your family and everyone else who's in the studio here. We need to think about that. We really need to think about that. So when people are talking about, no, the UPND need to do this, the UPND need to do forget mm. about that. About the the PF are not after the UPND, they are after the Zambian dream. What the UPND have to do, I did see a post by your president, HH, uh, if I can remember on top of my head, he was talking about the freedoms that you need when we hand it over to you. You need to fight for the freedoms. This is what it means. What is fighting for you? This is what it means. Andrew, why should we allow the government to be at the forefront of sabotaging the democracy of our country by issuing multiple NRCs to one individual. What, what, what should we, why should we allow that? Really? I think this has already been done now, and thousands of people have been offered you know, more than one NRC. What should, what should be done now? Listen now, what should be done now, really? Um, I think the damage is, 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 is way too much now. I think one of the things um, in America they say, if you are stuck in a hole, the first thing you want to do is stop digging. And how do we stop digging this hole that we find ourselves in terms of the democratic infringements, economic malaise, leadership, quagmire, and uh, basically lack of integrity in the way things are being done? We are calling upon every Zambian with a voice to speak. Every Zambian with a voice to speak. That way we can all collectively have a voice from pastors especially the pastors that went to, to the National Day of Prayer today. Think about what you're doing and what you could be doing for the people. When we speak collectively, when we demand our rights collectively, you can silence the voice of one. You can silence Chishimba Kambwili and others, but you cannot silence 18 million voices. That's where it begins. From there, actions will follow. Because when you speak, it means you have got courage, and that courage will inform your next step. We can't be here to tell people what to do, A, B, C, D. But like Anthony said, we must all feel injured. We must all feel violated. It's like you studying for an exam. You do everything right. Can't your friends have a leakage? That should injure you. If that doesn't injure you, then you didn't care about passing the right way. Okay. So for me, I agree with Anthony. The injustice of one is the injustice of, of us all. If Zambia is destroyed now, democratically, constitutionally, especially constitutionally, with the coming of Bill 10, which they're trying to pass against all odds, if Zambia is injured now, Zambia may never recover for another 50, 60, 70 years. Mr. Wally, your last remarks as I close the show. I have no words, Andrew. No words. This country is under attack. 
at the hands of the people we elected to protect all of us. Um, I don't know what else and how else we need to speak in order for Zambians to begin to know that it is time. It is time. Do we want our democracy to fall flat on the face, our country decimated, before we know that this can't go on? Uh, can't go on? Is that what we want? Anthony Bolia, Ubitinawa, thank you so much for having made time to appear on the assignment. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Andrew. We're in here. Good night.